you and thank you for the generous introduction. And I'll just add one more thing before I begin today that I'm very happy and jubilant to be here and I take it as a red letter day because it's my first academic lecture on the Roman finds in South Asia, west of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> I've talked on this in Europe and Asia, but I would remember Mary Washington all my life as the first occasion where I did it west of the Atlantic. And of course, next week I'm doing elsewhere, but you have taken the lead. <laughs> and mostly, departments of South Asian studies get interested in this in passing. But again, you have been one of the first classical archaeology or classics department getting interested on this. So, again, thanks to the organizers and to all of you. And we begin the very interesting but little known story of Rome and India. It's South Asia which is basically India, the largest country in South Asia. You can see the map of India. And why I include, although it's South Asia, I keep repeating India, I would interchange it throughout this lecture and later in, even in my publications, whatever, because till recently, those of you who are familiar with that region would know the biggest country in this region is India and many of the smaller countries like Sri Lanka, Pakistan and Bangladesh became independent countries only in the 20th century. Till then it was the subcontinent of India. So we keep interchanging India and Southeast and South Asia. Southeast Asia is different, it is further east. And that also was part of the far-flung Roman cultural and commercial contacts. As your professor here rightly mentioned, this is really an un unknown or forgotten piece of international history for unknown reasons. I am not able to tell you any clear reason. Tomes have been published on the Roman trade, Roman economy. Universities all over Europe and the US teach classics and classical archaeology, Roman history, Roman trade, Roman commerce, their seafaring abilities. But the Roman contacts with India and the trade with India, which was a major component of their economy, is hardly mentioned or known, even in scholarly circles. Despite a hundred years of research, which unfortunately was done in the backwaters, pun intended, in the backwaters of southern India, and remained unreported, unpublished, and unpublicized till recently. Well, I'll first quickly summarize to you the story, the interesting story, and then there's a big surprise waiting for you. An interesting surprise through the color slides a few moments later. Now, when did it all begin? I would like to make it more sound like a story so that it's really lively and interesting. The date is controversial. I or anyone else cannot tell you a definite date. 300 BC, 400 BC, each book may give you a different date and each may be correct in their own way. Well, without going, I am not go, I'm going to tell of Roman history or whatever to the bare minimum. Many of you would know a lot about it but concentrate more on the Roman trade with India, the Indian aspect of it. Sometime during the Roman Republic, the 
contacts began. <laughs> Initially, the contacts was only commercial. Later, it stretched to diplomatic contacts between the Roman side and India and also cultural exchange. The initial contacts were part of the more famous Silk Route, which stretched from Rome to China, the longest trade route in history, they say. And silk was the chief commodity of trade. Chinese silk was very famous. And other things from China, like jade and other items. It started sometime around 300 BC or much earlier, continued for a few centuries. And northern India, which is south of China, was very much a part of this silk route. And that was also the time coinciding with Alexander the Great's famous invasion of North India, which facilitated greater commerce between Greece and India. But this was all North India. And the trade was routed through Central Asia, which was then ruled, parts of it, by a famous ruling family called the Parthians. At some point of time, they say, much of this is conjecture, but there is no other evidence even to dispute it and it has made its way to scholarly literature. So we take it at face value. The Parthians at some point turn hostile towards the foreign traders traveling in their territory because both the Chinese and the Romans had to cross the Parthian territory on their long trade journeys. And the Parthians turn hostile due to some dispute over the payment of toll taxes which they had to to the Parthians. And the Parthians prevented Roman caravans from coming into Parthian territory. So the trade snapped at least temporarily. The exact date of this incident is still debated. When the trade stopped, the economy of all these regions participating in the trade, the kingdoms of North India, China and Rome were all affected, but Rome suffered the maximum. India could do without the trade. It was also trading with Southeast Asia and other countries, kingdoms, so that continued. But Rome was badly affected. She needed many things from India, badly, including most important, we were discussing at the dinner table a few minutes back, pepper. Indian pepper, which was grown only in the south, went from the southern part of the country up north and from there joined the Silk Route trade. And when the Silk Route trade snapped, flow of pepper from India to Rome stopped and Rome could not live without the pepper. Necessity was the mother of invention. Rome wanted to find a direct route to the southern part of India where pepper and other spices grew. Thus was born around 300 BC or slightly later a new sea route to India, at least around 2000 years before Vasco da Gama discovered a sea route to India from Europe, which is well publicized in literature. Now, this Rome South Asia trade route started from one of the southern Italy seaports, Putioli or Puzzoli being one where excavations have revealed a lot of Roman material, pottery and other remains comparable to those discovered in India. From these southern Italian ports, the ships sailed down to the North African port of Alexandria, 
which was a major transit hub in this long distance street. From Alexandria, they traveled on the river Nile and in Central Africa, the goods were downloaded from the boats or ships on the river Nile and carried on the back of donkeys and camels to the Red Sea ports on the East African coast, the Red Sea coast. From the African ports, we have many of them and one of your future speakers is going to elaborate on one port which he has excavated extensively, Berenike. We have quite a few others, Lucas Limen or Quadar al Kazim, and so many others. And from there, they sailed to the west coast of India, across the Arabian Sea. And from the west coast, they went to the east coast of India. Again, there were two ways of doing it. One was Sankam navigating the Cape which is called the Cape Comoran. And initially they thought of that and did it, but the rough seas and the pirates were dangerous. There are Greek works which mention the pirates in this region, but doing it across the land, there is a huge mountain range here, forested mountains, which was a major stumbling block infested with tigers, forested mountains with tigers. Hence they preferred the sea route, but finally the sea route was given up for hundreds of years and they risked going up the mountains, coming down and then traveling to the east coast of India because as one writer humorously put it, the tigers were far better than the pirates. And they reached the east coast and from there some went further up along the coast to eastern India. Some Roman trade was focused on Sri Lanka and they did stop there. They even went to China and further east to Southeast Asia. That was how the trade began around 300 BC. It continued. The peak of the trade was in the first century, the time of Augustus and Tiberius. The trade continued during times of Nero. And here, uh, and after the first century, they say it slowly started tapering off, but it continued till the early Byzantine period and then slowly died off and became a forgotten piece of history. Now, what were, why did they come? What were the main items of trade? The Romans wanted spices. The list is long. There are literary evidences among Greek and Latin literature of those days and the local Tamil literature of South India of those days which throw welcome light on this long distance trait. The Romans wanted spices of which pepper was the most important. It has been hailed as the king of spices and also as black gold. It grew extensively in Southern India, Sri Lanka and Southeast Asia and the Romans as you know were seafaring people. They needed pepper as a preservative for their meat in the ships during their long sea voyages. Hence they badly needed pepper and that's why they discovered the sea route when their supply of pepper across 